welcome into this edition of the Gasso Cast. We're back. It's been a long layoff, but we are just in time for the playoffs, um, which reminds me, download our app, Texas High School Scoreboard app. We are currently um, in the midst of, well, DT is, uh, and Sam are putting in um, the schedules for all the playoff games, and we even have a little bonus. We're, we're putting in the play-in games, so times, locations, everything that you need to know, and then the newsletter drop tomorrow. Yeah, the newsletter, uh, it's like we're rewinding time a little bit. I mean, when you go back to 1999, July, here's the original uh, Texas Hoops Great American Shootout uh, newsletter. And I can honestly say that I punched my credit card. I called the offices of Great American Shootout. You're showing your age them. a little bit. That's right. I'm 46 years old. Um, <laughs> you called to give a credit card. It yeah. wasn't an online hey, hey, process. Back, no, no, no. Back then it was that little, little, you know, the, the, that's my own sound effects. Uh, the, <laughs> you know, you go to dealers, you give them the dealer's card and whatever. But this is what we're coming back to. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just a cycle. And I will say for $2 a month, you can subscribe to the, to the, to the Gasso news newsletter. And get content. Look what, how much do you think this was in 1999? I don't know. How much was it, Blue? <laughs> $2 per month for $24 a year, you had a newsletter. And we're going to be doing it, kicking it out uh, twice a month. Rankings are going to be uh, in there that everybody loves to, uh, to see where you're ranked. And uh, it has been fun kind of reliving and going back because I've been with the company since 2004. And I remember these days. Right. And, of at least purchasing it, and then we went into digital world, and yeah, just what goes around comes around, and and this is this is the way the future is that, that newsletter. And I think we're right on brand with this newsletter, as with Gasso, is that we're gonna over deliver for two dollars a month, so you're gonna get plenty of stuff, a lot of different neat things in there. It's not just necessarily player driven, but there's plenty of players, but there's some fun, informative things. You know, it's gonna be a good read for sure. Absolutely, and. Um, Here's what's going to happen. The last free edition's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then starting in March, it's going to be $2 a month for premium. And we hope you jump on board. We really appreciate it. We put a lot of work into it, and we think it's worth your time. Lots of rabbit holes to go down. It looks like, oh, this long-form read. Oh, you can click on, like, every link, and it's going to link you to the kid's Twitter profile, highlights, anything you can imagine. So, yep. so enough about the news. Well, it's informative. It that's is informative. A, that's what we got a key on here is informative. Things that are that you need to know and, and learn about and talk about and – uh, you know, we're going to try to give you a little bit of everything on there. And yeah. it's going to be player-centric. Player-centric. That's that's uh, that's a big thing over here. I want to give a shout-out to all the district champions. Uh, good on you guys. Uh, there's still a few districts yeah. not settled yet. Um, McKinney Geyer cannot wait to go to that game tonight at Hebron at 7 p.m. That's going to be uh, – they're fighting it out for the district championship. But it's an extremely difficult task. <laughs> um Tons of res- it should garner tons of respect. Absolutely, big big deal. So congratulations. Hey, any other year to- that might be a semifinal game, yeah, a regional semi. My I mean. lord, yeah. <laughs> um, but let's jump in. Okay, uh, the season just ended, so let's jump in with some season superlatives. We as a group have traveled thousands of miles. We've seen hundreds of games and hundreds of teams. So let's uh, zero in on some of the some of the best ones we've seen. Timmons, I'm going to kick it to you. Yeah, so this one's kind of – we're going to talk about some top games as well. This could go under top games, and I think I'll be the only – actually, you and me both will have performances where the player we're talking about had a loss. Yeah. And that just is even more credit because obviously we want to give so much respect to the winning team. But I'll go and start off Trey Johnson versus Richardson round one. And when I say round one, the first time in district at Lake Highlands, that second half was one of the best performances I've seen out of a player in my – one of my own year seven or year eight of covering high school basketball in the state. Just he was so locked in his ability to hit shots. And it was just over and over again, down by 20 plus points. They were able to claw the way back and actually take a lead. And, you know, with my game recap, you can obviously see how that game ended. But locked in like I've not seen a player locked in in a long time. So just I wanted to spotlight that performance. And I'll put it in the description, um, a link to the game recap from that. So you can go and look at that. It's 20 minutes. It's worth your time. Absolutely. Sam and I were talking about Trey yesterday and just how good he was and how he can play out of a phone booth. And what I mean by that, like, he does not need a lot of space Oh yeah. to operate, get going, get a shot off um, against elite defenders Yeah. at age 15 or 16. I will, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I will say this. The way he elevates on his jump shot, that's one skill set that I think a lot of 
guards should learn how to do because like you said he doesn't need space because he can go straight up into the air with it yeah. and elevate over anybody it's ridiculous i'll jump in jacoby walter um i tweeted about this yesterday and same, this was actually the same night too <laughs> so yeah, as, a great night of- as i'm over here talking about what i'm seeing from trey you're talking about how many points jacoby had and i'm like wait a second yeah I tweeted about it. I've talked on the show about it. I tweeted about it yesterday just in a little performance thread. If you like like that that style, I put a lot of stuff out just kind of reviewing the 2021-2022 season. But Jacoby was incredible. He hit um, he had 49 points, 34 in the second half. He was without Alex uh, Anamekwe and Jackson Steele were not playing. Thatcher's first game back from uh, injury, returning from injury. And Jacoby just was phenomenal. And I hope to see the same type of game. And I know I'm not probably supposed to do this, but Denton Geyer's Kyron Lindsay was really good that game. And that, that was a special performance he put on. his 25-plus, 10-plus um, boards. I put him in the thread because he was just so deserving. But Jacoby Walter, do it again tonight. No, no. <laughs> Kyron, do it again tonight. I'd love to see yeah, it. I'll be there. <laughs> hey, that, that particular uh, day that y'all were out over there, I was at, uh, at Wiley watching Wiley take on Garland for a district uh, – Basically for a district championship to see him move forward. That's just we go everywhere. I feel like yeah, you know, big or small. And uh, you know, my guy that I'm going to talk about as a great performance was Jalen Lowe. Jalen Jalen Lowe at the uh, Fulcher tournament, I believe, last week in December. <clears throat> he was putting up stats in that tournament. A couple forty point games, a twenty seven to thirty. I think I saw him go for about thirty seven, somewhere around there. But the efficiency and what he did that game. Uh, it propelled him to the next level in, in what we've already thought. I think that also helped the recruitment of uh, Jalen Lowe and mm-hmm. what's happening right now with him. And Is he the hottest name? Like, the phones ring constantly, Blue, for you. and he, Him, Trey Johnson. I <laughs> mean, it's uh, – there's a lot of uh, uh, mix and match on the, on the phone calls, but Jalen Lowe's kind of, like you said, one of the guys at the top, and nice. I think he proved it, and he's – I've I've always said he's not a str- long stride guy, but the foot speed that he has, the ball in his hands, and able to to score and get people involved. Absolutely, I mean, you know he plays along Chris Marshall, who can go get thirty points himself. Mm-hmm. He's not afraid to give the ball up. Yeah, and so uh, you know you look at the body and you you see the long length, and you know he's got a you know Steph Curry type body. As I said before, so only because I say that's what's you plant that in your mind you can build on that, and that body's going to get bigger and stronger. And I thought that watching him go for about 37 points was some some of the best basketball that I've seen a player play this year. Yeah, he's one of my favorites to cover. You know, I'm a sucker for anybody with elite pace, and when you can match elite pace with that speed, man, he's just something to watch for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go into most fun game you went to. Oh, this really isn't fair Yeah, because – there's plenty of them, but Mass, you go ahead and start with this one, and I'll kind of backdoor it because we were both at this game. Okay. I think I might have even showed up just a tad bit earlier than you. Yes, uh, I was <laughs> flying in from Houston. Oh, okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> fine. I, I forgot. I 7 a.m. in the 7 morning. 7 a.m. flight. <laughs> it wasn't just because you woke up a little later than me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 7 a.m. flight, uh, got off the plane, went straight to Coppell High School. Brutal getting in that parking lot, and real for quick, the record. Before people know, you were flying in from Houston – because you were covering what? Pasadena. Okay. Yeah, the Pasadena Invitation. tournament. Incredible. Okay. Uh, incredible. Um, and I was flying in, and like I said, Coppell, man, that's a tough place to get in. Yeah. In the morning. Uh, anyways, uh, it was 9 a.m. I was tired. Uh, had been up, obviously, late the night before watching games in, in Houston. And then you go to this game, and I think the final score is 85 83 or 84 Yeah, I think that was the biggest things I said. That was an 80, it was 80 something, 80 something, and a 9 a.m. tip. And I'll never forget Nas Brown played 16 minutes because he was on a restriction for his ACL and he scored 28 points. Goodness <laughs> and then, gracious. And then game ended on, on a pretty controversial call, but it was just fireworks all around. Ryan, the, the stars were out. Ryan Agarwal was really good. Uh, Liam McNeely was really good. RJ Jones was really good. Gabe Warren was really good. Um, <laughs> just, it was. You know, for a 9 a.m. game, you usually expect those to be a little sleepy, a little sluggish, a little slow. And I think I had texted um, that I needed some offense injected into my veins because yeah. uh, I saw some, I saw some like grinded out games. You know, n- that's great, but winning's winning. But at the same time, like seeing the ball go in is really fun. Yeah, and, Liam and R.J. Jones didn't miss a shot. Oh, uh, and then we've seen this tweet go around quite a bit. Was hey, we should have some some games during the season that are during the school day. 
Oh, yeah. And that was similar because it was a Cop Hill ISD tournament. So you had the fans and the, the kids in the stands because it was a Friday, I believe. Sweet venue. Sweet venue. You had kids in the stands from Cop Hill. So there was that home court advantage at 9 a.m. Cool. Just a very unique game that I'm glad both of us were able to see high scoring. And like I said, the performances were there from the big time players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for me, you know, not a shocker. You know, I'll say more so I'm blessed to be in the position that I'm in to be able to cover games like this. Duncanville. Uh, Richardson at the Whataburger event Ooh. in the championship game. Everything anybody could have asked for at this point. And I think the one thing besides obviously what it is, if you say, if I, if you ask me, Duncanville Richardson, what can you expect or what did you see? You probably know the answer to that. One thing that you couldn't even script was when midway through the fourth quarter or third quarter, late in the third quarter, Anthony Black, who was in street clothes, eating candy on the bench, <laughs> walks out of the gym in his jersey and checks into the game. And I know, like, and I, I look at it even further. Anthony Black also had $800 retro <laughs> Jordan 5s oh on that gosh. I know that he didn't really want to be oh playing in because the way he was tying them up. But he's a winner. He'll find a way to compete. <laughs> yeah, so he competed. But just that right there, that's something that will stand out for a long time in my mind covering this sport. But it was just something special. Richardson pulls it out in overtime. Big performances all over the court. You know, I wouldn't hate to see that matchup again. Yeah, I think you speak for a lot of people when you say that. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe we'll talk about that a little later in the show. But uh, I could go Austin Westlake, Capel, same week, and I saw the championship game. Uh, I think that was huge weekend for for Austin Westlake to come to the Metroplex, kind of put their stamp on. You know what? We're ready to play against anybody. Right. Um, you however, better not. You better not. <laughs> you better go in ready to play if you're going to play Westlake. But one of my best games came kind of early. It was when El Paso Chapin played Houston Straight Jesuit in the San Antonio Northeast Northside Tournament, and you saw was it Jason champion was it championship? No, it it was uh, God, it might have been a second round game. Okay, uh, so Straight Jesuit with Jace Posey, um, and then you had KJ uh, KJ Lewis on the other side. Uh, not so much a battle between the two right. in terms of like on the court, but they were playing team ball. They were. Uh, Doing their share of scoring. I think K.J. Lewis, uh, you know, he, he led all scores in that game. I, I can't remember exactly how many, and I believe it went into overtime, and I think that was a fun game because it was not uh, – it, it it didn't – which it should have, but it wasn't like this big attraction um, still because you had football still going on. Sure. And, and then you saw Chapin a couple weeks later in, in the big stage of Spring Ooh. Creek, but – just in general, to see that game and see how in the first week in a basketball of tournament play, how important each game was and right. kind of put their stamps of El Paso coming into the into San Antonio, Houston Strike Jesuit leaving Houston and coming to play in the San Antonio tournament, which they always do. I just thought it was just a big game uh, for early on with, with those as much talent on the court as there was. Yeah. Um, so we're going to continue on with our, our, our playoff-themed – Gasso cast here, but I want to talk about moving in to playoffs and moving into the grassroots season. What are some things that are happening at Gasso? Blue, we hired two new guys. Yeah. Why don't you expand on them? Uh, first off, uh, we've been covering junior college for 33 years. Mike Kuhnstadt uh, started uh, this company with that in mind, not just high school. Uh, and now we have, 33 years later, we have an actual JUCO coordinator. And that's with Lauren Silver, who, you know, has been around for years and played played the game. Played at uh, was it McLennan that he played at? Yes. He coached at McLennan. He was a head coach at uh, Texas Western. This you talk about one of the most well liked guys oh. that you can even hire. It was Laren, and it was just the right time. And and uh, Laren's aboard, and so he's gonna cover JUCO, and we're gonna bring that product. For, Juco and Gasso, and I guarantee you that majority of those kids that are hanging around in Texas, uh, in Region 14 or Region 5, they probably played in the Gasso. Yeah. And so uh, we want them to come back and hopefully play in some some events in the future that we're gonna that we're gonna have, and and we'll post that on social media here, uh, within the next couple of days with some information. But uh, Laren is just he he him and Tim Littlefield mesh with us perfectly. Absolutely. And Tim Littlefield. I mean, this is its kind of weird when you think it's 20-plus years in the making from when I would lived in San Antonio. You knew Tim as you were growing up through going through Judson and playing high school basketball. Tim's just been a fixture, whether he was a high school coach, the AD at George Gervin, an evaluator, uh, 
just like how friendships happen and you never know where they're going to lead. And, and here he is going to be our youth correspondent as we're going to get it more into the youth, uh, portion of the, of, of grassroots, uh, starting to pub them, knowing who, who the studs are coming into their freshman year and so forth. Um, it's going to, it's, it's just going to widen our, our take as he's going to be going to, uh, San Antonio and central Texas. Of course, I'm still going to go down there, uh, during tournament season, but you know what? He's going to go over to Houston during the playoffs to, uh, to cover some stuff. So definitely two guys that I'm so grateful for in the right time and our movement in this, uh, market continues. to move. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited for that. Um, I'll hit on, obviously we talked about the newsletter. We don't have to go into that, uh, as much. And then our social media presence is just growing, you know, getting ready for, for the grassroots seasons. We've, we've got a lot of cool ideas that we're going to be pushing forward through social media. Um, finding the resources to do that has been a fun process. Absolutely. And just j- joining, uh, with some, some guys has been really, really fun. There's a lot of learning going on in this office too. Yeah. Let's just put it that way too. I mean, our our we're students. We're always learning something new, and and you know you push things off on us that that I think that our our viewers need to know is that it's it hasn't stopped. There's always something, and there's always something in my uh, in my text messages about six a.m. every morning <laughs> for me to read before I come to work. So, yeah. what's happening with the video team? Uh, we're growing. I'm adding more videographers. I think one thing that Mass you and I can attest to is that. We've joined this Gasso brand. The brand's already been built. Yeah. So our job's not necessarily to grow the brand. It's to grow the exposure to the players. That's our number one thing. You'll never really see us at the end of a Gasso event talk about, look at all the teams that played in the Gasso. It's just straight who played well, players. So everything with me is player-centric, team-centric. So how can I make sure that I have enough videographers to make sure that we're not just on this court? If we're in Duncanville, we can go see Green 2 and 3. If we're at Michigan Conception in San Antonio, 4, 5, and 6. If we're at the SWAC, courts five and six, things like that. So we're growing. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff. You know, I brought some creatives involved in this. So we're going to make some more flashy highlight reels, things like that. But at the end of the day, with our social media team, with our video team, it's how can we talk about as many players as possible? And I don't think that there's many people that want to do what we want to do or can do what we want to do. And that's just kind of what we're kind of aiming to. So the fact that we're growing trying to talk about as many kids as possible, I think is what our focus is at this point. Yeah. To, to wrap that up real nicely in a bow, the, the, what, what blue said, what I said, what, what Tim and said, this is everyone's big stage. Like that is kind of our tagline and that embodies what we're trying to do. And if you play well, we want to acknowledge that. And, um, yeah, that, that's really fun. I mean, of course we want to have the top matchups and yeah. the top players and stuff like that. But I think all of us can agree is that we're excited to see kids that not necessarily are the, the, the top nationally ranked guys. Like, I was super excited last year, especially a team like THP with Brooks, mm-hmm. and a kid like that. Just there's so many guys that we get excited to see going into Gasso's that we really do love covering. So the fact that we can, it's everyone's big stage, like you said. It doesn't matter if you're top 10 in the nation coming through or you're scrambling just to get extra looks from colleges. Like, it all excites us, and we're just blessed to be in this space. One example I can give you is Andrew Jones is playing in back gyms. And get and guess who went to go see them? College coaches. They'll go anywhere if you can play. That's why it's everybody's big big stage. The college coaches will go out and they will find you. And Andrew Jones, that was pre McDonald's All American. Andrew, Jones. I would hope so. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> I would but hope you, so. But you, I'm just saying before his name was even surfaced. Right. Yeah. The playoffs are essentially starting tonight. You got some play-in games. This season went by so fast, didn't it? <laughs> Way too fast. I just feel like we were talking about playoff predictions and things like that in the fall, and I was probably really wrong. <laughs> but we're here now, so here. we get a chance to be right. Yep, yep, we get another shot. When are we wrong? Oh, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm always Rank- going to – I mean, hey. Our rankings are perfect. Yeah, there's receipt. Go find it. <laughs> uh Let's talk contenders. Okay. Well, before that, the one thing I'll say is that the only thing I was really loud about was after I saw Somerset play, I was like, oh, they'll be in the – so there's still a chance that happens, so I'm not wrong yet. So that's the one I'm still wrong about, and like I said – Dallas State play- family, is that what you're talking about? We're going to jump for it right now? Somerset, and that was the only time I've ever been loud on this podcast like that. And <laughs> playoffs haven't started yet, so I'm still right. So come at me. All right, there you go. <laughs> so we want to talk contenders. Okay, Everyone knows the play- major players here. Um, you know, you've got Duncanville, you've got Richardson, Kimball, Lancaster, Beaumont United, uh, Amarillo, I mean, Amarillo. Yeah. We, we, we know some of these major, major players, but I want to talk contenders and, and 
plug for the newsletter. We're going to give our our staff gave their their kind of their editors picks of who they think is going to win in 6A, who they think is going to win in 5A, and then a team that you're probably sleeping on and that you need to watch and pay attention for that that could make a run for sure. But when I say contenders, we're not going to be surprised if these teams are in San yeah. Antonio. And that's what we're talking about, right? Who can make it to the state tournament? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and, and yeah. PSA, PSA, we're not going to talk about every contender. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to those in, a, in advance. We know we're yeah. going to miss some teams. And you're, you're probably right. Um, and we're just going to hit on six. We're going to do two apiece in 6A, two apiece in 5A. And we're just going to leave it at that. So who wants to kick it off? You jump in. Uh, since it's fresh right now, Judson down in San Antonio, <laughs> my alma mater. But I mean, they had to earn it. You know, they've won district three time the past three years, and they've had a couple early exits from the playoffs. You know, they have a little more depth this season, some senior leadership with the nearest Brandon right there. You know, coming off a big win to finish district against Wagner, which was for the district championship. Big you know, I, I think they're roller right now. Coach Lopez has those guys. Good, you know, one thing you got the the big man inside Johnny Bowens who's committed to Texas A&M for football. You know, you have Donovan Gomez who can shoot the three. They're versatile, can beat you in a couple different ways. And I think if this is the year, this is going to be the year. They're hot right now, and I just, you know, there's somebody that right now that I think can make a run. Athleticism at the point guard position, at the combo guard with Anarius. Yep, Brandon. absolutely. So I went so to yeah, my, I went to Judson too. Yeah, so our alumni, but I'm not <laughs> saying that like you have to earn it. You have to earn it. So go earn it. Hey, I'm going to just stay in Central Texas and with uh, Austin Westlake. Yes, I've beaten this down, but what have they done all year? Win. And it's that team chemistry. It's the making the extra pass. It's getting everybody involved. Everything on that court. And if they get hot from three-pointers, you're just not going to beat them. You can't. And, and a year ago, they were at State, and they lost to Duncanville with K.J. Adams. I think this team is better, and I have to keep repeating that, um, you know. So, Robert Lucero, sorry, you're, you're not going to fly underneath the radar. <laughs> <laughs> they might be the favorite in Region 4 at this point. Yeah. A Judson Westlake matchup? Oh, brother. I love it. Um, I'll say, I'll talk about McKinney. You know, they can kind of be on the major players, but I think um, with how their playoff run ended last year, earlier than most people expected, um, I think they, they feel like, hey, we, we've got to go prove it, make a statement in the playoffs. And, and the coaching staff's amazing with Coach uh, Watson, Coach Patterson. They do such a, a wonderful job. And then they got the players to do it. I mean, they have a game breaker in, in Jacoby Walter. Um, they have Alexander Mekwe, who can go against any big, can guard anyone um, in the DFW area. Um, and then they got a lot of pieces, Devin Vincent, Jacoby Campbell, uh, Jackson Steele, Thatcher McClure. They, they, they have a lot of guys – who who can beat you and when you have balance um at least from a spacing standpoint that gives your best players a lot of room to operate and and if and that best player is willing to to make the right play you're really going to be tough to beat and i think i think coach watson and, and coach patterson they're they they want to prove what they can do and i think they're capable of making a serious serious run and i think that one's interesting because if you look at rankings you know mckinney's going to be right there consensus <laughs> top 10 if not even higher yes. but i think due to the emergence of teams like lake highlands and denton guy are in their same district they are flying a little they're more in the mix than at the top where we kind of have seen them yes so but yeah no that's definitely a team they're i mean they're 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 the top team i understand that but i i think when I've talked to them, they they want to prove like they want to make a statement. Yeah, and I think that kind of fits the bill of what we're. Talking I mean, when about here. yeah, and Richardson's the favorite to come out of that region, so right there and then, you know, they have something to prove for sure. Yep. Um, for me, I'll go ahead and a task is seated down in Houston. You know, with my time covering this, a task is has always just been in the mix. And you look at them now; they've won thirteen of their last fifteen, uh, four in a row. And they're a similar team, like you said, with Austin West. Like when they're hitting three ball, like and the way they're coached and the style that they play. You know, they're a tough out. So, you know, it's another team I wouldn't be shocked if I saw them come out of that region. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Arkansas's 40 Minutes of Hell when they came out, you 94 feet. When they want to turn up the pressure, David Martinez, gets, he just gives them a look, and then they go out and execute. And it's they just a are very, very handsy with the balls coming. Even, even trying to get the ball in yeah. off the baseline against them, It's and you have to go 94 feet, you're going to – 
you're going to make a turnover. Hard to scout against them in a, tur- a quick turnaround in the playoffs. I just think they're a team that if they can get rolling here and get a couple wins under their belt with all the momentum, then they have a real shot. And not just their guards, when they can get Caleb. Caleb Pat- Pouncey, yeah. Get him really involved with his athleticism against some other athletes. I love the way they're he runs in transition, too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and jump back in there. Fort Ben Elkins. I, I mean, like this one. Th- besides having one of the, the best players in the state, um, Chris Johnson, you know, I think if you continuously watch this <laughs> Gasso cast, you know how much we, that we think. But when you look at Osborne and you look at all these key uh, factors that are, are out in Jackson uh, Fields, when you look at all the key factors that are out there on the court with Chris Johnson, they should not be a pushover. Um, if they lose on a, on a night early, it's probably because they weren't uh, playing their best basketball. But when they're clicking, they are very difficult because of the bodies, the length, the athleticism, the ability to re- rebound against bigger guards and, and, and big men. They have all of that. And Albert Thomas over there I think is a really good coach, and he's been on these runs before, and he's been in San Antonio. Yeah. I'll jump in here. Uh, a, a true team that is just – Absolutely flown <laughs> under the radar. Dickinson, they're thirty-one and three, eleven and one in district. They've won ten straight. Um, I watched them at the Cy Hoops uh, Invitational, and they've got a lot of dudes. Seth Jones can really play. Chase Johnson, Patrick Washington, or uh, yeah, Patrick Williams Jr. down there holding it down on the block. They got Zion Little. Must I go on? This team um, is battle tested. They're in a, in a in a district with Clearbrook, and they've. They've gone toe to toe with them, um, and they've beaten them once, lost to them once, and I just, this is a team that's a little sneaky. They got a lot of pieces to them, and they can really make some noise. And I just, I want to throw that name out. <laughs> like, yeah, I like that. They're, they're no, very sure. good. I saw them win by twenty five the game I was at. Yeah, I phys- love Seth they're Jones. physical, super super talented. We, all we have to do is rewind two years ago during the pandemic when head coach Jason Wilson did not get his chance. Yeah. In, in state in those semifinals, which I think everybody w- were projecting that Duncanville-Dickinson matchup. Mm-hmm. Well, here they are under the radar, like you said. <coughs> He's going to coach as hard as he ever has because this team at 31-3, and three, he wants to make sure that he, gets, he, get, he makes this run and trying to make a statement. Yep. So let's go ahead and move on to 5A. And like we said before, there's plenty of more contenders and there's some more people that we wouldn't be shocked if they made it. So moving on to 5A. I'll go ahead and start. Frisk Memorial, undefeated in district. You know, I think one thing that stands out about Memorial is that I think they have identities. You know, you have the lead guard in Isaiah Foster. You have the deadly scorer in Avery Jacks who can give you 30 any night. Drew Steffi that does a little bit of everything from scoring it, facilitating with the rock in his hand, rebounding. Shoot, the last game I saw, he had five blocks. You have Big Mason Wujak inside. I think you just have a little bit of everything, and you have a, a complete team here that knows how to win. And right now they're kind of flying unconscious. So, like I said, another team that can, if they can start to get a couple wins in the playoffs, that they're going to be very dangerous later on in the regionals if they can make it there. They got they got a tough little matchup with the Colony first round. If they win that, they'll probably be facing Lancaster, which will be a must see round two Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Um, and it, you know, you're going to find out. We're we're going to find out, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm with you, man. I think they're I think they're the real deal. They're really good. I'll jump in Mansfield Summit. Um, I've hit on them quite a bit. Uh, just a team you don't you don't want to <laughs> see them ever, man. Yeah, they're just so well coached. They yeah. talk about identity. Mm-hmm. These guys, um, they all play so hard. Um, I love David Terrell. He's just a leader. I I got to sit on a front row of a game at the um, Spring Creek tournament. I just got to hear him kind of bark orders. Bark orders probably the wrong way to say it because it was it was like he was just getting people where they need to be. And then I saw them one game at NT Rice, and I, I left after the first quarter because they were up 25-2. to two, And I was like, yeah, I know who's going to win this tournament. And uh, they took care of business, and they they won district uh, split with, with uh, Mansfield Timberview. And, man, it's like, like I could flip a coin between who I think's um, better out of those two groups. And I, I don't – they're they're just <laughs> – <laughs> like, pay attention. I don't know what else to say. Like, you do not want to face them. Period. End of story. You know, what with El Paso Chapin, you know, it, it's – I'm going to just do both of mine right here because they're both out of West Texas. Cool. El Paso, uh, El Paso Chapin with uh, K.J. Lewis leading them, and then you have Amarillo with their big three. Um, they're opposite brackets. 
they would have to face each other in regionals, uh, Chapin, Amarillo. Uh, but looking at uh, at our scoreboard and looking at the apps, as it's it's getting updated, like now, every App time store. we get something now. And so, um, I need Amar- a soundboard, Timmons. <laughs> <laughs> Amarillo is going to be on the same side as as Mansfield Timberview. It looks like, uh, but this is a team that that is built, and they know how close they were last year with Amarillo and Jason Peel and uh, head coach over there. He has something circled in his calendar and the date and, and, and matchups. And, and he needs, he has his guys focus to go every, every game by game. And, you know, it's none of these guys are going to surprise us. El Paso Chapin with the best player possibly in West Texas. Is this the time that, that they get hot and are able to, make in san antonio just a lot of little storylines here of just the contenders and and people might think we're crazy of throwing out some of these teams but you know th- this is what this time of the year you just don't know who's going to be hot at the right time you can't project that or guess at it i mean i'm sorry you can only guess at it yeah but if these either one of these teams continue to stay hot it's they'll be in san antonio or they'll be in this case be facing each other in the regional finals yeah for me we mentioned a little bit of um this team earlier in the podcast but uh fort ben marshall undefeated in district and when you have two guys in Jalen Lowe and Chris Marshall who can legit go for 70 combined in the game and I'm sure it's happened you know they've both had 30 plus point scoring performances um you know it's guards win Mm -hmm. and like you like you said playoffs if you get rolling in the playoffs you know it's hard to stop you so those two right there you know some two guys that I think can like will their team to the state tournament in San Antonio all right I got a team for you. They've won 27 of their last 30. Um, <laughs> Katie Paytal. Yep. Again, no one's paying attention. Um, and they've got some dudes. They've got really good guard play. Backcourt of Trevor Frank, who's going to DBU, and, and Cameron Ingram, um, could played for Team Temple, was very good all summer. And then Charles Chuck Wu and Abu Kamara. Uh, they're, they're really tough. They're battle-tested. And, you know, it was – we were here watching them in the regionals last yes. year, yep. and uh, they were right in it. They had their they had their shot. Um, I believe Amari Abram and and Summer Creek yes. just bested them, but it was a heck of a game. It may have been a tough. Yeah, I, it was a very tough team. But is that the regional semi semis? Yes, it's all we had like seven games on at once. It's yeah. it's all running together. <laughs> uh, but point being, it's like this is a, a regional team that has been there before, and they're sneaking under the radar. And and Trevor Frank, one of the most underrated cr- clutch guys in the state of Texas, yeah. love that kid. Um, and then I want to say under these under this, um, comment below and talk about what's your most important things a team needs to have going into the playoffs, whether it's just being on a roll from the season, you know, how do you reset if you maybe finished on a loss and you kind of snuck into the playoffs? Just talk about your thoughts below in the comments, and we'd love to hear your discussion and dialogue. All right, last game that we're going to play. Okay, we're going to play fortune teller here and, and speak these games into existence. Okay, um, what is one game you would like to see in 6A? Um, I'll start, you know, Richardson Lake Highlands 3. I think both of them have been <laughs> – very very competitive and i think every single second and minute that these two teams take the court the rivalry grows and i think you're looking at fireworks if you get this third game and it's not going to be easy for both of them to meet up you know they're going to have to overcome some things and win some big games to get there but i think if you if you get these two teams matched up again i mean to the student managers hate the other team and stuff like that so it's getting serious it's a must it's must see and i i think it, it will be one of those great games if we get to see them so that's one that i'm speaking to existence you want me to go yeah i'd like to see duncanville spring westfield spring westfield very very good currently sitting at i believe number three in the tabc 6a rankings um you know they're in region two with duncanville and this game could have happened a little bit earlier uh, than we might expect, and it yeah. may be must-see. Yeah. That's just where I'm at. Obvious, Richardson, Duncanville. But when we talk about as big of a stage as state, because that's where they would meet, people, fans, you know, the, the junkies that go to state every year, and that's where they see the magic happen, people need to see this game. Yeah. We, we – People in the Metroplex, they live in 
breathe that that type of game and that type of atmosphere? Could you imagine that in San Antonio um, on that type of stage where the Central Texas fans really get to see basketball and how big this game would be? Yeah, that's it's kind of like we need it for the state of Texas. If if you were just trying to fortune tell it, um, and so uh, I think that we could be close to getting that. I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah, at all. Five <laughs> A mass. What do you got? Beaumont United Kimball, low hanging fruit. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> but the game delivered in every way, shape, and Absolutely. form last year. So why not see it again? I got to sit courtside last year for that game, and uh, Terrence Arsenault delivered, and so did Arturo Morris, and so did everybody in that game. It was uh, Wesley. It was awesome. That one. That's the one game where I sat down, and got excited that I was a fan and not filming, and then all of a sudden I'm like, crap, why am I not filming? <laughs> It was, it was one for the ages. Uh, hey, for, I think DT got it. Yeah, God. <laughs> DT, and then somebody got it. Somebody got it. No, DT did. Uh, for me, let's keep talking about him. For Ben Marshall versus Crosby, when you're talking about two of the best guards in the state, regardless of class, you got Jalen Lowe and Chris Marshall. And now when you talk about a Crosby team, one of the most explosive scorers, PJ Haggerty, going to TCU, why wouldn't you want this matchup? Ooh. You know, just. You might fly down to Houston for that. Yeah, so you know, I'm going down to Houston <laughs> as soon as these playoff games start to have the back to backs and the big the big uh, arenas down there. But yeah, no, I want to see what PJ Haggerty can do and how he can make a run in this UIL State tournament, and why not see him against Forbin Marshall? I'm not sure where they would match up at all, but just something that I would really love to see. For me, to close this part out, it's Amarillo, Dallas Kimball, a lot of the same uh, players coming back on each team, a lot of unfinished business, really for both of them. And so that would be another uh, another game just to sit there and, and sit courtside and watch as, as it just unfolds. Man, if if like if I was the coach of Kimball and I had to live through what Coach Smith lived through last year, like coming back from eighteen down like five times. Oh know, god. I think yeah. he wants to take care of business a little yeah. quicker this year. Really but quickly. Yeah. Um that's gonna wrap this uh, this episode up. Thanks for tuning in to the Gasocast. Make sure you're joining our community, guys. Uh, we got a lot of content coming out on Twitter. Um, got a lot of cool ideas coming to life and follow Gasso Blue, Gasso Mass, iPhone Hoopers, Gasso Clips, Texas Hoops Gasso. Did I get them all? Yep. Shout out to Lee High School in San Antonio. First time they made playoffs since 2009, my senior year, when they had Paul Garnick out there getting buckets. Shout out to them. <laughs> really big moment. Really big moment for that program that I just want to shine some light on before we end this. Love it. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in.